Hi everyone, I'm Saloni. Hope you all are doing well. We're back again with another video on one of the most commonly adopted ES6 feature. But before diving into it, please hit that subscribe button and click on that bell icon to get notification of our new upcoming videos. We all have been defining functions all our programming lives. Arrow functions came into existence with the new ES6 feature list. It gained a lot of attention over time because of its concise syntactical implementation. In this video, we are going to talk about regular functions, how they can be converted into arrow functions, its syntactical variations, and how is it behaviorally different from regular functions. And last but not the least, where it actually shines and is powerful and where it should be completely avoided and it's a big no. So without much further ado, Let's get started. So in order to understand fat arrow functions better, let's do an exercise where we'll one by one convert the function declarations of ES5 regular functions into fat arrow functions. A typical ES5 function declaration looks something like this. It starts off with a function keyword, followed by a function name, which could be optional, followed by a round bracket where you put your parameter list and then curly brackets where you define your function body. Let's start off with example one, function with no parameters and try and convert it into an arrow function. The arrow function syntax does not have a function keyword. Even the function name is optional. You can straight away start from the parameter list followed by the fat arrow sign which is equal to and greater than returning the function body. You all must have been a little surprised here seeing how I have returned the body here with no curly brackets and return keyword. So my friend, this is what the magic of concise function body of an arrow function looks like. When you are returning a JavaScript expression, an expression is something which is returning a value. You don't have to include it into curly brackets. Even the return state keyword is implicit. It actually means return Two. Here, the body will return 2, even when you have not mentioned the return keyword. There is one more equally valid syntax where you have to write an arrow function with no parameters. There you can simply replace the empty parameter list with a placeholder that is underscore. The rest remains the same. It's an equally valid syntax. Now let's move forward to converting regular function with single parameter to an arrow function. Here as well, you can straight away start from the parameter list. You can specify your variable within the round brackets and then arrow function, then your function body. Here the arrow functions recommend recommends you to not use the parentheses around the parameter list when you have a single parameter. So this is valid, but the arrow function syntactical rules recommends you to write it this way, not the way that we have mentioned in line number 16. Since I already mentioned that this is the recommended syntactical rule for a function with single parameters, but there is one special case where you even if you're passing a single parameter, you have to put it around the parameter list. You have to put it around round brackets. And that, that is the case where you're using the rest operator in the parameter list, where you're trying to convert your parameter list into an array. This rest operator, spread operator, and destruction and everything came, came into existence in ES6 feature list. For people who don't know what these are, I will add the link explaining them in the description box below. So if you are trying to uh, use the spread operator like this for a single variable uh, in, the, in an arrow function, you have to put it around round brackets. And you can use it like this. This is a special case. So guys, there's one more special case in arrow functions with single parameter, which got missed, unfortunately, is the one where you give a default value to the parameter. Then you have to put them around round brackets too. So now let's move ahead to a variation of arrow functions with multiple parameters. Here, the parameter list of an arrow function looks quite similar to a regular function where you have to put them around the round brackets and you, you can separate 
the parameters using comma separator and the rest remains the same you have to put an arrow symbol and if you have to return a value you can skip the parameters round curly parameters and return keyword and just return a concise body like this so the next thing which we are going to be discussing about isn't about converting regular functions to an arrow functions but we did talk about concise body concise body multiple times and we have returned a concise body multiple times in the examples which we have discussed above but what is a concise body so uh, if you have something like this uh, you have certain variables which you have passed to an arrow function and uh, you want to do multiple things in the function body for instance you want to loop through uh, a variable and use this parameter to add it to a variable inside it for instance something like this so does this a valid syntax for an arrow function no it's not so the arrow function concise body is only valid if you are returning a javascript expression not a javascript statement this is a javascript statement i will add a link for it as well if somebody who doesn't know a javascript expression and a statement is to help them understand th this as well i'll add a link to it in the description box below as well so i'll briefly explain what javascript expression is javascript javascript expression is something where you expect 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 the statement to return a value in this particular case it's not that so this is not a javascript expression but a statement so the concise body and arrow function where you can skip return keyword and you can skip the curly brackets it is the only case when you are returning a javascript expression so if you would have had something like this for instance if you would have had a a statement like if a is greater than b then say yes return and no so this is a valid javascript expression where you are returning a value based on something based on any conditional statement that you have put here but if you've had something like this you are converting the uh, ternary operator to if else in this particular case it's not valid so you have to be very careful while writing a concise body but that will come with practice so whenever you just just try to create a mental model of only using concise body or writing a syntax for a concise body when you are returning javascript expression otherwise what you have what you could do is put it around curly parenthesis and now this is a valid syntax okay so now let's quickly move ahead to a couple of more variations so the next one is when you're returning objects for instance if you're defining an arrow function and you want that arrow function body to just return an object in that particular case you cannot do something like this the way i've written right now since in an arrow function the curly brackets define that you are defining a function body here but these curly brackets are not part of the function body but here are part of the syntax of an object so for, for this particular case the arrow function says that if you want to return objects in the function body just wrap them around round brackets and this is a valid syntax for returning objects in arrow functions you have to put it around round brackets so lastly let's talk about if you have multiple javascript expressions 
and you have to execute them sequentially in a concise body so what's the way of actually doing it for instance if you are passing a variable to an arrow function and you have to do multiple things to that variable you have to uh, increment that variable and then probably return that variable eventually so arrow functions gives you gives you a way to actually do it in a very beautiful way so if you have multiple things to do uh, in in a sequ sequential order and th all, all those are javascript expressions you can put them around round bracket and just separate them by a comma so if you had to do in a regular function if you were supposed to do something like this the similar variation of it in an arrow function would look like this beautiful concise body so guys so far we have discussed about the different variations of an arrow function now let's understand the logical differences between them what does this mean to you let's discuss the behavior of this keyword in both the functions function types with the help of some examples in this example we have defined an object and a function within both of them we are trying to access the this keyword before running this example let's understand the context binding in both the cases the context or the this keyword binding in a function is defined by how the function is invoked or called so there are multiple ways of calling a function let's try them one by one the first way is by the usual function invocation that you all must have seen like this previously we discussed that the this keyword binding in a regular function is defined by how a function is invoked here at this particular line we are not binding this function to any object we're just calling it like this what do you think would be the output if i run this function like this let's execute it and find out it printed undefined because when you call this function without any context you are calling it in a global context so this would be pointing to the window object here when you are running it in the browser so this was normal function invocation the other ways of calling a function would be using call bind or apply where you pass the context as a first argument to these functions for instance i have an an object obj with a colon one and i call the foo function like this by passing a context to it here you can see now when i pass the object to this function the this keyword is now pointing to the context with which i have called foo which was with the context of object obj here so this dot a printed one and if the function invocation of foo like this using call i don't pass any context to it in this particular case if the first argument of call or bind or apply is either null or undefined the call would automatically starts pointing this to the global context so again we would get this as a global object and this dot a would be undefined again so there is one more way of calling a function the way in which it is defined within an object like this which we have defined here let's just copy this and get this down here so that it stays in the view so if i try to access the property print of an object bar in this particular case let's put all our learnings into this so we said that the way a function is invoked the context is binded that way so in this particular case i'm, I'm invoking this function with the object bar so here this would be pointing to bar and bar does have a property a and which is which has a value 1 so when i would call print of bar object it would print 1 so that was all about how this behaves in a regular function now let's understand its behavior in arrow functions the definition of arrow function says that it has no this arrow functions don't identify this as a context to it this behaves just like any other normal variable that means if you would have tried to access this in it it would try to resolve it lexically 
by lexically resolving means it tries to look for this variable in its surrounding lexical scope or the scope in which it is defined for those who don't understand what a lexical scope is i've created a video in which i've explained about lexical environment and scoping i'll attach the link to it at the end of this video but let's briefly understand the definition of the lexical scope if you have written code in such a way that the scopes are nested like the way in this example we have nested the function bar in the function foo in lexical scoping the inner function can access the variables defined in the outer function scope and the vice versa is not true so when you execute the console.log a in function bar it would be able to access the variable that we have defined in the function foo scope now let's move to understanding this in arrow functions on the left you can see the usage of this keyword in regular functions on the right we have converted the inner function in the same example to an arrow function let's reiterate our learning so far in regular function the context or the this is binded at the time of function invocation whereas in the arrow function it is lexically resolved like any other variable defined within the scope so what do you think would be the output of both the console.log statements on the left pause the video right here and resume when you have answers so in the function outer this would be the context of the object obg because the function outer has been called with its context but for the inner function since it is binded to no context so by default this would be the global context here so here is the output the first console.log statement would print us the object obj and the second would refer to the window object moving on to the right pause again and work your mental model and relate the execution with your learnings in outer similarly this would be the object obj but since here we have converted inner to an arrow function this won't behave like a context the inner function would try to lexically resolve this and would ask its outer function scope if it has a this to which it would say yes since we called the outer function with the context of object obj so this in both inner and outer function both would point to object obj so here is the output by this example what we have learned is that the this keyword in the arrow function is equals to its closest regular functions this So now moving on to another difference, which is where is my arguments object? Arguments is basically an object accessible inside the function, which is array-like and contains all the values of the argument list passed to a function. So when we try to execute the statement which says console dot lock arguments in function foo, which is a regular function, and we call this function with this set of arguments called one, two, three. it would print the output something like this but it would return us the arguments object whereas if you convert the same regular function to an arrow function and try to call it in a similar way it would give you a reference error since arrow functions don't have arguments object so now let's move on to another interesting difference between them can you instantiate me functions in javascript can be instantiated with a new keyword every function has a prototype object which has a constructor function which gets invoked when the function is called with a new keyword like this let's dive into the function object foo and see the prototype object and the constructor function for that you can call the console.dir method on it Here you can see it has a prototype object which has a constructor function which helps you create a new instance whenever you call this function with a new keyword. With regular functions, you can create multiple instances since it allows you to dynamically bind this. But arrow functions don't have this, so calling an arrow function with a new keyword isn't allowed. If you do so, it would result in an error. Let's see what that is. So here, here I'm defining a function bar, which is an arrow function. Let's call it with a new keyword. So the error it gives is that bar is not a constructor. Let's dive into the function bar using the same console dot log console dot dir 
function and see what the object function object of bar looks like. Here you can see it doesn't have a prototype object. So it doesn't have a constructor function as well. Since it doesn't have a constructor function, you cannot instantiate it with the new keyword. So this was the end of the part one of this video. Hope you guys found it helpful. In the next video, we'll talk about some interesting scenarios of arrow functions, where it shines and where it can, it can create blunders and you should use them wisely. Before that, don't forget to like this video, share your views in the comment section below and please subscribe to our channel.